watching from. We are going to get started um, right about at noon. Uh, today you're going to want um, a little round something and a uh, paper towel. in Pittsburgh. How are you? It makes me feel good that you are tuning in from so far away. I hope things are going well in Pittsburgh. Well, okay, you guys, it is noon. So we're going to get started. Um, everybody grab your paints and your paint brushes and your water. Um, trying to get situated here. Okay. Um, I'm doing well. Thank you, Michael. Um, <laughs> okay. So today, um, in honor of tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo, we are going to make avocados. Um, and we're going to paint them and we're going to draw them. And um, then I have a special surprise for you. Um, so my announcements for this week are, um, obviously today we have art. Uh, we have something going on every weekday at noon at Plano Arts and Events on Facebook. Um, so today is art, every Monday is art, and then um, at noon. Tuesday and Wednesday are our local artist spotlight. And uh, this week we have a photographer and um, a professional ballet dancer. Um, so they're really cool. So you definitely wanna, wanna check those out. Thursday, we will have our student virtual art exhibit that we have been doing every week since uh, quarantining started. If your student wants to participate, please send their artwork to my email, uh, which is apagan at plano.gov and uh, we will get their art in that student virtual art exhibit. All I need from you is their first name and their grade and their school. Um, so send that in so they can participate. Also, when you all finish your art today, I would love for you to send it to me so that I can see what you're doing, how you're doing, and um, yeah, it'll help me. Um, so, and if you have any things that you want to paint, you just let me know and I will work on it. I know one of the things that was um, asked about was clouds, painting clouds. So I am working on that. Okay, um, today we're doing avocados, but today is also May the 4th. So we're gonna have a little Star Wars challenge at the end for you guys. Um, so tune in, stay, stay listening for that. Okay, before we get started, I have a reminder for you. Why do we have this art class? We have this class because it is fun. It is entertaining, it's something fun for us to do, and hopefully you'll leave with a little piece of art that you love. This is not a competition. This is, uh, it's not a race. Um, nothing like that. This is just for fun. So if you can agree to have a good time and not beat yourself up, um, then let's get this this done. But you won't beat yourself up because you guys, 
this is so cute and it's I, I promise you it is real simple um, it's it looks really cute and complicated when you're done but it is this one's not a hard one okay so let's get started um, all right so you're gonna need your little circle you are gonna need something to trace your circle with you're gonna want, goodbye pencil, it just rolled away. Um, you're gonna want some paper. I have some paper with me that is watercolor paper. Um, if you have watercolor paper and you have not used it before, what you do with watercolor paper is you wanna find the bumpy side. This is the bumpy side here for me. The other side is smooth. What happens if you paint on the smooth side? Nothing, it just works better if you're on the bumpy side. If you do not have watercolor paper, that is also okay. It's all gonna be fine. Okay, so, um, well, hello from San Bernardino, California. That's wonderful. Um, you guys have lots of avocados in California. Um, all right, so here we go. I want you to give me a thumbs up if you promise to be kind to yourself, to have a good time today, and do not compare your work to anybody else's. Do not judge yourself. Just have a good time. Yes, thumbs up. Thumbs up, okay, here we go. Goodbye, baby avocados. All right, I will leave that there so you guys remember to send me your work. Cause I wanna see it. Okay, so my little avocados that are in the example, I painted on a four by six card um, so that I can mail it to a friend when I'm done. If you wanna do that, you can do that too. I'm going to use a bigger piece of paper right now so that um, you all can see what I'm doing. All right. Yay. Okay. I see, I see thumbs up. So I have a tiny delay. <laughs> so, so when you guys are giving me your thumbs up and your questions, I can't see it right away. Um, so I just saw that you guys were me thumbs up. Thank you. Okay. So see how we have avocado with a pit here and avocado with a spot where the pit was on here. That's what we're gonna trace first. Maybe I'll leave that, let's see. So you can kind of see, where should I put it? Right there, okay. All right, so I'm gonna take, this right here is a yellow watercolor pencil. You can also use a graphite pencil. Just uh, trace really lightly so that it doesn't interfere with your painting. Uh, watercolors are transparent, so whatever you draw on here uh, will show up except with watercolor pencils, once you get them wet, it blends out like paint. So um, these were really inexpensive. So um, if that's something that you want to invest in, it's it's like nominal, very small. Um, but you don't have to. You can just use a regular pencil. Just trace lightly. Ready? Okay. So I'm gonna do one right here. That's my pit for this side of my avocado. I'm gonna give myself some space so that these little sides can sit next to each other. Okay. And I'm gonna trace another one. I do not know, I can't quite tell. Let me see my delay if you guys can see it. I think you can see that. It is yellow, but it's there. Okay, so when we're doing uh, these outlines, I'm trying to give you guys really basic shapes so that it's not overly complicated and you can recreate this when you don't have me talking to you. So whenever you're looking at something you want to paint, I want you to look for the basic shape. So we just trace those circles. Now if you look at avocados, they're sort of like that would be a circle right there with kind of a rounded, what like oval triangle shape on top. So first let's figure out this big circle around this circle, right? Let me show you what I mean. It's kind of freehanded. There's a bit of a circle. Okay, same thing on this side. Bit of a circle. It's okay, just do it real light because you are gonna paint over that. Okay, and then I want this shape here. So if you think about avocados, I, I did kind of a better job with this one, but they're not perfect, right? They're not, um, they're not like a, a perfectly oval oval or triangle or whatever. They kind of, sometimes they kind of lean a little bit wonky, so I'm gonna call that the wonky triangle shape, okay, on top. So that's what I'm drawing. 
kind of a wonky triangle, this shape right here. So this would be my circle, let's do, and I kind of want it to match because this is gonna be my other side. What happens if they don't match exactly? Nothing, it doesn't matter. So there you go. Okay. So now you have your basic shape. That was the hardest part, hooray, you did it. Good job. Everybody with me? Yes, still there, okay. Um, real quick, I'm gonna give the brush talk. So you guys, I'll take care of your brushes. Okay, here's my water. Here is my brush. My brush has a lovely point at the top. Um, if your brush does not have a lovely point at the top and it is all fluffy, like if you ordered a kids, kids set, sometimes they come with brushes that look like that or even grown up sets do that too. All right, so I'm just gonna get this wet. Ready, we're gonna fix it. I'm just gonna pull it with my fingers. And now it has a lovely little point and that way your bristles are not flying everywhere and messing up your painting and getting you frustrated. Now you have a point to use. That's what I want you to do. All right. Oh, also, in case you have never had this class before with me, do not leave your brush. Ooh, I just shook the camera. Sorry, guys. Do not leave your brush straight up and down sitting like that in your water cup. You will ruin that nice little point that we just worked on. Um, so when you are not using your brush, you can either set it down on a paper towel or use chopstick holders like so, or just set it down. Just don't leave it standing up in the water. It will ruin the tip of your brush. Okay, here we go again. All right, so when we're gonna paint this avocado, first thing we're gonna do is draw the outline. We did that, okay. Next thing you're gonna do, we're gonna outline the avocado using green. Then we're gonna fill in this place here. We're gonna leave the pit area, this circle that you drew, we're gonna leave those alone. Do not paint on those. We're gonna leave those empty. We're gonna fill in this part. That's what we're doing now. Here we go. Okay, here's my paint. I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint right there. So that's the color I'm using right now. It's my green. Okay. When you dip your brush in the water, you're gonna dip it, and look, it's got these drippies on it. Slide it off the side of your cup like that, so you have that nice point. And also now you won't have big drips coming down onto your painting and ruining everything, right? Okay, so here we go. We've got our outline. We are going to go around the edge of the avocado. We're not gonna worry about the middle yet. And we are definitely not gonna do the center part. Okay, here we go. Do, do, do. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, you can tell me to slow down, first of all, um, but you can also just kind of watch along and then come back to it because all of our classes stay online at Plano Arts and Events on Facebook. Okay. So you can always come back and watch them uh, because I don't want you to feel rushed. I don't want you to rush through your painting because first of all, this is for fun. So I want you to have a good time. But also I don't want you to get stressed out trying to keep up. This one, um, I tried real hard to do something that wouldn't be wouldn't be difficult to keep up with. But also sometimes it's just relaxing to watch people painting, so you can do that. Okay, so I've got a wet brush. It does not have paint on it. I'm just gonna use the water and touch the paint that we just laid down, and I'm gonna fill in the meat of the avocado, which is real for real, what you can call the inside stuff in an avocado, it's the meat. Okay, so what's cool about this, I'm just using water and smooshing the paint around. And that is gonna do a few things. First of all, it's gonna fill in the color of the meat, but 
because the paint is kind of moving around in the water, it's going to make all these little splotchy marks, um, which is going to make your painting unique to you. There will not be another painting like it. It will be all yours. But also, like, that is what avocados look like on the inside. They are, the colors vary in them. And the edge where the, where the skin is, is darker. If you cut that avocado in half. Okay, so uh, right now for me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, this is cool. It varies, it's filled in, but I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to take, while this is wet, this is still all wet, I'm just going to drop in some more paint and I'm going to smush it around. Now, I don't want it to be even throughout. I want it to have some color variation because that's what an avocado looks like, but also because that's what makes watercolor paintings interesting. So I'm just dropping in paint and it's kind of moving around in the water. If it doesn't move exactly how I want to, I'm just going to push it a little bit and get some of that pigment moving around. Remember not to paint that middle part where your seed is going to be. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that right now. Uh, might even drop in some more water to let my paint move around. Ta-da! That's one side. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. Is everybody with me? Everybody's still alive? Painting along happily, I hope. There we go. Here's the edge. Just a little bit on the sides. So tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. I am interested to know what you all are going to make to eat for Cinco de Mayo. Are you going to be themed? Are you going to have tacos or enchiladas? I know there are several restaurants um, in Plano that are doing um, takeout. I think some of them are opening this week. You could definitely just go and pick something up. Okay, here I am with the water. I'm just gonna move this around. I'm gonna leave that center part alone. And let's see how much of this green we can push out into the avocado meat. I have always loved avocados. Um, when I was growing up, I actually grew up in Georgia, where they were not as common as they are in Texas. And um, this was long, long ago. <laughs> long, long ago. Uh, when I was growing up in Georgia, but my mom's family is from Texas. So I would come every summer to see my grandparents, and I got to eat avocados. And... Um, I love them so much. My grandmother used to call me Amy Avocado, which I think is adorable. Okay, I'm gonna drop some more paint in there. The other thing that we used to not be able to get when I lived in Georgia, um, but I loved having it, was tortillas. And nobody, I would bring some back. My mom would buy extra and bring them back uh, when we would visit our, my grandparents. And, um, Nobody in Georgia knew how to say tortillas. <laughs> so my friend, I let some of my friends try them and they would, um, one, of my fr my, one of my best friends was asking me one time, uh, or she was trying to ask me if she could have some and she couldn't remember the name for it. So she was like, that, that round bread, that round bread that you bring back from Texas. Another fun fact, my parents brought um, Brought tamales back one year to share with our Georgia friends, and uh, nobody knew how to eat them, and <laughs> they were biting into them with the husks on. It was rather hilarious. We corrected everybody, but uh, yeah. You guys, look. You're almost done with your avocado. Look at that. And all that is is your outline, some green paint, and some water. Really cool. Okay, so let's talk about this little guy here. 
Okay, so when we're gonna paint this seed, I want you to leave a little round line, and that's gonna be for the glare. Because you're all, and that's also gonna help create the illusion that instead of being a flat piece of paper, this is a round seed. So we're gonna do the a round line. We're gonna leave it blank. Do not put paint on it. Okay, in fact, let's go ahead and draw it out. Just as a reminder, I'm gonna take my paintbrush. I'm gonna set it on my chopstick holder. I'm not gonna leave it in the glass. Okay, so let's make a little line. Okay, my, my seed is curved like that, so the line is gonna be the same. I'm just gonna draw a little crescent moon there, and I'm not gonna put paint there. It's gonna stay blank. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use two colors for my seed. I'm gonna use brown, and I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow to lighten it up, because my brown is a real dark brown. Give me your glob of water. Okay, glob of water on the brown. Accidental glob of water on the orange, which I'm not using, haha. -ha. And a little bit on the yellow, on purpose. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna paint this seed. Just this one side, remember the avocado seed stays on one side. This side's gonna be blank, we'll get to that. Okay. You just need a tiny bit of brown. Put it on your seed, and then, uh, because you don't want it to be too dark, we are gonna take some water, and we're gonna spread this brown we're gonna leave that little crescent moon. Try not to touch the edge. If your brown gets into the green, it's not the end of the world, take your paper towel and blot it off. And it will come up. In fact, I'll show you guys in just a second, as soon as I finish this, a giant boo-boo that I made, but I fixed it by blotting it with water. Okay, so, actually this really isn't brown enough for me, so I'm gonna drop some brown paint in. Look at that, yay! Spreading everywhere. Kaboom. Okay. And now, to give it a more avocado-y color, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of yellow and I'm just gonna drop it in there. And then I'm gonna push it just slightly. I'm not gonna blend it in totally with all the brown because I really wanna have some variety in color. I'm just gonna let the paint do its own thing. See how it's spreading out? Okay, now for me, this crescent shape is actually too big. I put it there as my reminder, but I can make it smaller. I'm just gonna cover it just a tiny bit there. So it's, it's like a little bent rectangle, right? I'm just gonna let that do its own thing. One thing you're gonna notice, even if you're using watercolor paper, is that once it gets a lot of water on it, it starts to buckle, and that's cool. Don't worry about it. It's fine. That's, that's the nature of watercolor. If it really concerns you, you can take some washi tape or some painter's tape and you can just tape down the edges of your painting and that'll keep your paper from buckling too much, but you don't have to. Um, the advantage is it'll, it'll hold down your paper. The disadvantage is that then you can't move your paper if you wanted to. Sometimes I'm left-handed, so I'm, I move my paper around a lot when I'm painting or writing. Um, so that I don't get it smeared on the side of my hand, but, um, you know, you can, you can tape it down if you want, but then you can't do this business, right? Um, but again, you can always just get your body and get it up and move your body if you want to leave your painting tape down. Um, that is your choice. I'm not doing it right now because I have a tripod and, um, and I'm painting around the tripod so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so let's work on this this last little bit where the pit was. So if you think about your avocado, when you pull the pit out on one side, this side still has this big hollow spot, right? Um, so you want to be able to communicate that there's depth and roundness there. So you're gonna have a little bit of a darker side that's gonna put in your shading, and then we're gonna kind of drop this in uh, with a little bit of brown mostly water. We're going to move it around so that the edges are darker 
um, I'm gonna kind of leave this edge alone. That's gonna create like a shadow, which is gonna trick your eye into thinking that you're looking at something with depth. So you're gonna wanna use that nice little point that you made on your paintbrush. If you don't have a point right now, go ahead and smooth it out, get your little point. Get your paintbrush wet. Okay, we are going to use the teeny tiniest bit of brown paint right on the tip. If you want to keep this guy behaving, um, here, let's, when you're done, don't forget to send me your stuff. If you want to keep this guy from spreading the rest of your painting, don't touch the green yet, especially if your green is wet. Just leave a little white line and you can always go back in and clean that up. Here we go. We're just going to go on the edge. Okay, so I've painted like probably half of this. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other side and fill it in with some water. We just got a wet paintbrush. You wanna keep the darkest parts on the outside there and a little bit lighter towards the middle. Now, we don't wanna have this totally brown. Let's grab some yellow to help communicate the color of the flesh of the avocado a little better. Boom, right in the middle. I'm gonna put that in there. Ooh, mine is very yellow. Okay, I'm gonna water it down. Okay. So I'm gonna step away, I'm gonna kinda look. And to me, it's still, it's too yellow. So I'm going to grab my paper towel. I don't know if you did, if you did the trees with me, you remember we did this with the trees to make the roots look lighter. Okay, ready? We're just gonna dab it straight up and down. It's like slightly yellow now, right? With the brown edge, so it looks like it has some depth. If you wanted to, you could even go in, let's see what happens if we add a tiny bit of green. I don't wanna to add too much green because I don't wanna flatten the whole thing out, but I can add like maybe a tiny bit of green. Ooh, let's do a tiny bit of green and let's grab a tiny bit of yellow. I'm gonna mix them up here. Look at that. What do you think? Okay, so we've got this now. We've got the rind, it looks like a real rind. This flesh looks like a real flesh. We've got a seed over here. We've got the spot where the seed used to be on this side. Now, if you want to, you can put in the little tiny bit of brown where like the little stem part in the avocado was. Um, you wanna wait until it's dry Mine is dry, I think. We're gonna find out, right? So again, I'm just gonna use the very tip point of this brush. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of brown, and let's see which side is gonna have the stem. I'll put it on this side. And that is just gonna be like the smallest little line here right at the top. And since it's still attached, I'm gonna Pull it up just a little bit so it's like a half circle, a little tiny dot right there in the top. You see? Yay! Okay, and then over on this side, this side doesn't have the, the stem because the stem stays on one side, but it will have like a little bruise mark from where it was. So I'm just going to do a tiny line where that would fit. So now they look like they match. If you want to, if you want to make your avocado look like it's like slightly older, um, not old enough to ruin the taste of your guacamole, but maybe slightly older, you can even go in and put just a few little freckles, right? I'm just kind of, you want to wait and make sure that your avocado is dry before you try to put any spots on him. And you can make them match up or not. You know, sort of like how a butterfly's wings are the same all the way around. Maybe your avocado is the same. We don't know. He might be different. I'm just going to do a little bit more down here. Freckle, freckle. 
And again, you do not have to do this. If the thought of having any brown in your avocado just makes you sad, don't do it. I don't care. I love avocados so much. I will eat them either way. Uh, my daughter will not. Um, so if I see a tiny bit of brown on the avocado, I try to scoop it out and hide it before she finds out. Of course, if she watches this video, now she will know that I have been fooling her. Okay, little t I kind of like the idea of giving our avocado little freckles. Hooray, adorable, so cute. Okay, um, and then don't go away because we still have our Yoda, well not Yoda, sorry, mm, I gave it away. Uh, we have our May the 4th Star Wars challenge coming up. All right, so I'm gonna sign this. And um, if you are drawing along with us today, um, you have already heard the basic outline, right? Let's go over it real quick. If you are drawing along, then you would have taken, let's move this here slightly. Hello, okay. If you're drawing, then that means that you took the washi tape and you outlined a circle for your pit. Look at that. Oh, I did a terrible messy circle. That's okay. And then we made a circle around here for the flesh of the avocado. And then we made sort of like a wonky triangle on top. Okay, and then you are just going to, look, I have two different colored greens here. So if you have a darker green, use that for the rind. That is probably super loud when I slam those down on my desk here, guys. I'm sorry. I will be quieter with my pencils. Okay. Um, all right, so if you are drawing, I'll just keep drawing and you can follow along. Um, so, May the 4th, Star Wars. Um, it was really hard for me to pick a class for today because I could not decide if we were going to do something Cinco de Mayo themed or if we were going to do Star Wars themed. And then I realized we could do both because <laughs> these same techniques that you use for drawing an avocado, you can use for making baby Yoda. So... <laughs> Um, if you, if you really think about it, Baby Yoda is an avocado turned sideways with two seeds in the middle. So you would do an oval with these same colors. His eyes are brown. They have great big giant black pupils, but they're brown. Um, and then his ears, hold on, let's finish doing the avocado and then I will, I'll do a little sketch of his ears. Um, basically what I want you to do, if you would like to celebrate May the 4th today, I'm going to fill this in with a lighter color. Um, I want you to create a baby Yoda using the same steps that we used to create avocados because it would be adorable. And then I want you to email it to me at this address. Um, and if you guys can send those to me, I will post them because I think it would be adorable. So that is our May the 4th challenge, is to do some avocado baby Yodas. Maybe baby Yoda eating an avocado or a frog. I don't know if you guys have been watching. Um, my gosh, I just forgot the name of it. The Mandalorian, if you've been watching The Mandalorian. Okay, so if you're doing the seed into the drawing, you're just gonna fill it, leave your crescent shape. Okay, let's fill it in. Um, and do in the shape, I'm gonna use rounded strokes in the shape of your seed. Um, I did not see Baby Yoda eat an avocado because I don't know if they exist in that universe, but I do remember him eating a frog and that was like the funniest part. Hilarious. Okay, so if you're using markers or crayons or colored pencil, boom, there's your avocado. Um, to do the seed, let's see, let's move everybody over a little more. I'm going to do it sideways and keep everybody in the shot. Okay, um, if you're doing the empty part, first of all, don't outline it in brown like I just did. That's good. 
outline it in yellow. And then put your brown on the side. And then you can just kind of mess with the colors until you get them where you want them. So you use a little yellow. And the good thing about colored pencils is that you can, and crayons actually, you can layer the color as much as you want. Yes, you can draw Baby Yoda, Michelle. You can draw Baby Yoda using the same, uh, same shapes like that. We're going to lay a little green over here. And then to get the shadow, we're going to like this. Okay, so Baby Yoda. Gosh, I should have drawn Baby Yoda. Okay, Baby Yoda. <laughs> Let's look. Let's take a look at this avocado. Think of Baby Yoda. He is an oval. So instead of doing a circle here, take your avocado shape, not this one, you're gonna do it again. This is your avocados. And then I want you to take another sheet of paper and do an oval. And there's Baby Yoda's face. Look at his big eye. Um, and that's your Baby Yoda. And he's got a little round nose here. And then his ears, Baby Yoda's ears are, here, this would be, do not judge me, because this is just a quick sketch. Okay, if that was his little head, his ears are like um, triangles. And they kind of lay down on the edges. So instead of sticking straight up and down like a cat, Baby Yoda's ears come down this way. Okay, and then his eyeballs would be here. And he's got a little tiny nose. And his mouth does like this business. Okay, so then you would do the same thing. Leave him a little crescent to make his eyes gleam. Hello. Big black pupils. You do that black, right? And then this part was brown. And then he wears like a little, little Jedi jacket thingy. Okay, if so look online. Find a picture of Baby Yoda to look at. Believe me, he looks like an avocado. Okay, <laughs> so if you decide to do... Baby Yoda avocado, send me that. If you just decide to do avocado avocados, send me that. If you decide to do something entirely different, send me that. Especially if you are a student, I want you to send me your artwork, whatever it is, avocados, Yodas, airplanes, knitting, sculpture, I don't care. I wanna see what you're creating. Send it to me. If you're a student, it will be in our student virtual art exhibit, which is every Thursday at noon. Yeah, what else? Okay, so today was art. Tuesday and Wednesday, local artist spotlight. Thursday, student virtual art exhibit. Friday, we've got live music. We're gonna have a lunchtime concert with Jade Nickel. And um, yeah, check our listings. Send me your stuff. Thank you guys for painting along. And uh, may the fourth be with you.